Welcome to Digimon Analyzer. This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm a Digimon Analyzer. You can find all my work at mjmunios.com. Join me as I talk about Liberator, episode one, which is a three-part episode, and this is technically, I don't know what episode, I think episode four of Digimon Analyzer, the relaunch of my Digimon podcast. So here we go. Uh, things I want to talk about. Uh, three months, mysteries, monsters, NPC, and premium girl. So, I will start off right away by saying that I like this episode a lot, this episode one. Uh, it definitely keeps the intrigue going. It presents, it answers some of the unanswered questions. Yes, it answers the invisible questions I talked about in my last review uh, as a story writing thing. Um, it answers the invisible questions and it provides new invisible questions, which is fantastic. That's exactly what you want to be doing uh, in order to keep the engagement. So the answers are, they have not been isekai'd. They're able to leave the world. They're able to come back and do it. Actually, that's not really true. It seems as if they're able to leave the world and come back, um, but we don't really know that because all of their time is spent in the digital world, in Liberator and Lacuna, whatever, and uh, that's what it feels like. It feels like a happy thing. You you would think if they'd been isekai there, if they'd been stuck there, they would have said something. So to me, it feels like they come and go as they want. And they make reference to the card game and the Liberator game. So it's not like we're trapped in this game and we don't know how we're going to get out of it. But it's saying it's more like they're saying like, yeah, uh, it's been three months and Arisa is way better than Shoto at the Liberator version of the game. But he's better than her at the card version of the game. So it's interesting. The uh, official like introduction or back of the book synopsis blurb type thing that was on the website. I think it's on if you go to the desktop site. It's on the Webtoons Liberator page. Um, it has a little thing up in the right-hand corner, and it says what it's more of what it's about, and it describes Shoto as giving up easily and never winning at the card game. But it's talking about the Liberator card game because apparently he's... Well, it based on the dialogue, it sounds like he's way better at the physical card game down on the mat, but that something about being in the digital... Or in Lacuna, in uh, the tail pod, uh, makes it so that he's like flustered. He said he's not overwhelmed by the battles anymore. There's just something missing for him and something's wrong where he fails to win. And uh, it's interesting. They have like a friendly battle type situation where they are just playing a practice run against each other. I don't know what that means. There's no danger. There's no stakes. There's something different about the the battle. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, and, and we get to see a little bit of how the game works. Uh, we learn, and I, I don't know if this is accurate to the card game as it is now, or uh, the card game as it was before, but apparently there's five defense shields that you get. So basically, um, <laughs> like Dungeon Dice Monsters from Yu-Gi-Oh, right? You get three heart points, uh, and then once the third one's gone, you're dead. Uh, and the monsters move in different areas of the field. This is slightly similar. There's a breeding ground, and then there's like a foreground or battleground, I guess. Um, I don't know if the breeding ground is the hand, or if it's a field on the deck, on the if it's a place on the field or what. But apparently you can move your Digimon in advance into the attack position or attack area. And when it's in the battle zone, it can blast through five shields of your opponent. And then on the sixth turn, so I'm assuming, let's say somehow in five turns, for your first five turns, you're able to get a Digimon and it's able to successfully attack your opponent's security shield. Um, which I, I, it sounds to me like you can... Eliminate those five security shields in five turns, and then on your sixth turn, if you've got a Digimon on the field and your opponent isn't able to pull anything out, on the sixth turn, you should be able to beat them. So it sounds like the battle should be pretty brisk. That's what it sounds like to me. I don't fully understand the rules, but they're introducing, like, the security check and these these different things. So uh, that's interesting, and I'm grasping a little bit of what it is, but it's definitely dynamic looking, and uh, it's definitely exciting to watch the monsters, them going back and forth against each other. Um uh, I don't remember all the different Digimon that they pulled out, uh, and it almost seems like every turn you get new Digimon out onto the field. I don't know if you have to let them go out for one turn, and then you call them back to the hand, and then you put out new ones or what. I'm, I'm still unclear on that, but regardless, uh, you know, it's interesting and engaging based on like observing the mechanics of the game in Liberator, which I assume is supposed to be the same mechanics of the game outside of Liberator if you were playing on tabletop. But uh, anyway, that's not what we're explicitly being told, but it's kind of being implied. That being said, you have a couple mysterious elements pop in to the issue, the episode, and they are, well, first of all, a clarifying element. It's been three months that they've been playing, and he's still not any good, Shoto, that is, but which is why I'm implying all these different things and making all these um, assertions or, or drawing all these different conclusions that I'm telling you about. So <clears throat> that's good to know. 
Um, I like the fact that they have been there for a while and that they're familiar with things or they have a level of familiarity with things that makes it more impactful when they're getting these surprises and mysteries popping up. So, uh, we've got a couple surprises. We've got Shoto sees out of the corner of his eye or senses some small figure running past them, which I believe is Schumann, but we'll find out later, I'm sure. Or, I mean, it's heavily implied that it's Schumann. If it's not Schumann, I think that will be clarified at some later point. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um... Then there's the explosion. What's the explosion caused by? I guess it's by the NPC blowing a hole through the wall to come and draw them into a fight. Um, then there's this mysterious girl with the white hair or platinum blonde. or whatever. It's white. It's white hair. Um, she's got a collar on. She looks very much like the girl that has the actual like manacle uh, chain around, you know, the chain and the collar around her neck. But this is a choker that she's got on right now. Um, and we just see her for a flash. And I don't know if she's still in the scene. She very well may still be in the scene. She might be outside of the little bubble that the NPC created. Or she could be within it. And we're just not focusing on her at the moment. Uh, then we've got this NPC. Which apparently it's part of the game that Arisa knows about. She asks, is this an event that we don't know about? How is this possible? How is it happening? Is there some... Uh, Shoto asks if it's a bug. Mm -hmm. And she um, says... Arisa says that there are not supposed to be these NPCs who can engage a battle with you, like against your will, um, in this section of the game where they are. <clears throat> so I don't know if that's like a different server or if it's a different area in the particular server that they were in, but you're not supposed to be engaging in these types of battles. But these types of battles are something that's a structure, part of, built into the structure of the game. And then I think it's called Navi. It's got, uh, a body similar to the NPC, but the head is different. It's like this, and then it's got little points on the sides. Um, and that Navi, character i don't know if there i don't know if navi was explaining to the audience who's reading it or if navi was explaining to arisa and choto i kind of think it was to the audience anyway um but uh navi I, I think it's navi is explaining that uh there are these npc opponents that'll come up and they're these weird crazy looking cyborgs which have a fantastic design by the way uh, great visuals there uh and they will come and they will battle people at certain times, in certain places, and there will be a specific set of rules or a special set of rules. One of those rules is that the characters, the player, their deck can be changed without their consent, without their knowledge or whatever, and it seems like it's temporary, and then their deck goes back to being what it is. That's what I would presume, because um, they're bringing their actual physical deck with them, and it's getting scanned and imported into the game. Um, but, yeah, so uh, Schumann says that the NPC, they have been chasing it, him, her, whatever. Uh, they've been chasing me. Uh, Schumann says to Arisa, who's taken him, um, and I love to, uh, there's a great moment for Shoto where there's this explosion, um, and Shoto runs forward to protect Arisa, and he ends up getting, um, he ends up getting, uh, hit in the face by Schumann, uh, but it's cool because you get to have this great heroic moment for him where he's jumping in to defend her, and, uh, not because she's a girl, but because she's his friend, right? <clears throat> and I really like that he's jumping in to protect her, and, uh, I think it shows, you know, good character for him, and, uh, he thinks about the, quitting the battle later on against this NPC, but, like, it seems as if it's a bug, and it seems as if it's dangerous, so I can understand why he'd want to quit, and Arissa just wiped the floor with him, and presumably he's going to get beat similarly again, um, or beaten, uh, and if that can result in some sort of, you know, big negative consequence or whatever, it makes sense. It's strategic for him to quit. Uh, he doesn't know it's like a life or death situation and he didn't quit in his fight against Arisa, but he is quitting in this, the fight against this thing that could potentially cause some sort of negative outcome to them, which I think is interesting. Um, yeah. And then, uh, before he has the chance to quit, Teromon shows up and, talks about how this is his island and he's going to protect it and he's going to help whoever needs help or whatever. He's got this like interesting hero complex and Shum whereas Schumann seems like a victim. Um, I'm a little confused or I was confused last time. I thought Muchoman was actually going to be his partner and it was eventually going to turn into Teromon. Uh, I guess because it's a card game, you have multiple character cards that you could use. They might have multiple partner Digimon, which is kind of strange and different to me because I'm so used to just the you know, seasons one through four that I have a familiarity with and um, not so much the games I tried to play uh, whatever that one where you're in the new digital world um, and the game, uh, Cyber Sleuth. I tried to play that and I quit at some point very early on. Um, I thought, where are all the Digimon? <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so that's interesting that uh, we have you know, the potential for multiple partner Digimon going on here and Terramon becoming like 
maybe his main, or it'll be Muchoan and Teromon. I'm not exactly sure, but he shows up, and it's a cliffhanger ending, uh, and it's really exciting and really engaging, and I like it. Um, you know, so we've got the mystery of these two monsters showing up. We've got the mystery of this NPC showing up, and apparently it's been chasing at least Shumon, maybe Teromon as well. It's unclear. Uh, how did Teromon break through the barrier that the NPC created? Uh, I don't really know. Was he already inside the barrier? That's unclear. I don't think there was a sound effect for him, like, crashing through or whatever. But there may have been, and I just didn't uh, acknowledge it. And then, like, is the girl with the NPC? Or is the girl partnered with Shumon somehow, and they're running from the NPC? Or when Shumon said that they have been chasing them, did she mean they, the girl, premium girl, and uh, the NPC both have been chasing Shumon? So I don't know, but I'm intrigued by the story, and I'm curious to see what is going on and for us to learn more and that's it for my coverage of episode one of digimon liberator and i hope to continue it um as you know with some regularity as time goes on and i thank you for your time and attention until next uh, next time take care be well be brave and keep growing i hope you enjoyed that subscribe to keep up with me like and share to help me reach more people like you and go to mjmunoz.com to find your next favorite thing and don't forget to let your voice be heard. Stories are always better when you're part of the conversation. Until next time, be well. This is MJ, signing out. This has been a Story Over Everything production.